question I'm interested in is whether is science political, is scientific knowledge political, or is it just a, a reflection of the way that the natural world is? And I'm going to think about the um, reception of the origin of species by Charles Darwin as a way to get at that question and look at the way that Darwin's theories of evolution were um, received in Russia. So Darwin published The Origin of Species in 1859 and it contained his theory of evolution. And uh, in the 1860s, Darwin's work was uh, read in Russia and uh, people responded to, it, responded to it in a very interesting way. Because on the whole, they enjoyed it, they thought it was a really profound theory, but they also um, criticised it. They said there were things wrong with it uh, and some very particular things that Russia was quite distinctive in, in, in rejecting. Um, and uh, one of the things that they said was that uh, English politics or Eng the, the, the English system way of life was built into Darwin's theory and that it wasn't really a true reflection of nature and it had to go. So first, the, the, the issue that they're worried about is the struggle for existence. And this is an idea in the theory of evolution that goes back to the late 18th century and the work of an English uh, writer named Thomas Malthus. And Malthus wrote a, an essay on population in 1798. And in that book, he said that the resources that were available for people to live on, to survive, were very limited. And um, he was writing against a view that man, humans, could progress forever, that thing, life could improve and, uh, for, forevermore. And Malthus said, no, there are limited resources and people are going to have to struggle to get them. Uh, and there's always going to be less resources to live with than there are people trying to get them. So everything is a, is a fight. And Darwin took that idea and he incorporated it into his theory of evolution. And he said it provided a nice metaphor for thinking about the way that species have to struggle for existence. So they also compete with one another, fight with one another to get hold of resources to, to eat, to, to live, and there's always a struggle. And then what the theory of evolution said was that the, peop that the organisms that are capable of um, uh, having an advantage in that situation will be the ones that thrive. Um, so a slight change in the, the, sh the nature of the organism that gives it an advantage um, will be inherited. And then uh, over very long periods of time, those changes transform the organism into a new species. So Darwin incorporated this idea of the struggle for, for existence from Malthus into his theory of evolution. And it appeared in his book, The Origin of Species, that was published in 1859. Now Russians started to learn about the origin of species in 1860, and there was a translation of the book in 1864. Um, and the response was, on the whole, very positive. Uh, so um, um, people thought the theory of evolution was a good thing, and they, biologists, naturalists and philosophers picked it up and celebrated it for the rest of the century. However, there was one feature of the theory of evolution that uh, Russian commentators didn't like, and that was this idea of the struggle for existence. Um, and there were two grounds on which they said that this was a problem. The first one was that in their experience, there wasn't a struggle for existence among species. Um, they lived in a country that was extremely large, uh, Russia, the, the Eurasian um, land mass is a vast area. And so the Russian experience of species on the whole was of small numbers of plants and animals and, and uh, humans um, living in very vast terrains. So they didn't have a sense that there was a very, very limited set of resources that a huge mass of organisms was trying to compete to get hold of. If anything, it was the other way around. There was an abundance of resources and there were a few organisms that were trying to, that were using them. So that didn't seem right. 
Um, but another thing that they picked up, and this is maybe where it gets really interesting, is that um, they thought that the use of Malthus in Darwin was actually political. That what Darwin had done was to take a theory um, that was a reflective of the English context in which Darwin and Malthus worked and incorporate it into his picture of nature. So what was that theory, uh, what was that context that um, Darwin uh, was, uh, had incorporated into his theory? The short answer is capitalism, the idea uh, that people uh, compete with one another um, in a free market and those who fight hardest will uh, succeed. This was the mantra of, uh, uh, of a capitalist economy and what Russian commentators said was that uh, Darwin had inadvertently incorporated this into his picture of nature. So animals and plants struggling, fighting, competing uh, to survive was really a reflection of English society, not a reflection of the actual natural world. And if you looked at the natural world and they're thinking of you know, the vast expanses of Siberia, you don't see that happening. So there were various ways that um, Russians elaborated on this idea. Um, one of them was to say, we do think there's a struggle for existence, but it's mo presumably more complicated than Darwin makes out. Um, it's not just a matter of incorporating Adam Smith and, and Malthus into your picture of nature. You've got to be more careful about, about what you mean by um, the, the relationships between animals and plants. So, for example, it's fair to say that uh, organisms struggle with their environment. Life is tough. Um, but that isn't the same as saying they're competing. There's also a question of whether species compete um, with one another or compete within the species. And um, there was a Russian biologist whose name was Clement uh, Timuryazev, and he uh, tried to pass out these different features of uh, competition and, and argued that it wasn't that simple for, uh, to understand how evolution actually worked. Now the um, uh, result of all of this, uh, among both philosophers and biologists who read Darwin, was that they proposed different ideas about how evolution worked. And one of the most interesting ones developed in the, uh, towards the end of the eight, uh, 19th century, um, and it's most famously associated with the Russian uh, anarchist Pyotr Kropotkin. Now what Kropotkin said, and he was following a, um, some bio biologists that he'd heard earlier writing about this, what Kropotkin said is actually look, what you see in nature uh, that's much more common than struggle is cooperation. So if you look at flocks of birds, if you look at mother uh, animals and their, and their um, offspring, they cooperate, they look after each other, they work in groups. And surely that's the natural state that leads to evolution, not this sort of violent competitiveness that Darwin is talking about. So in 1900, Kropotkin wrote a book called Mutual Aid. And Mutual Aid was this idea that it's actually cooperation that leads to evolution and not competition. Now, um, Kropotkin is famous for his idea of mutual aid, but he's also famous because he was a, a, a radical, he was political, he was a radical, he was an anarchist. Anarchists argued in the late 19th century that if you left humans in a state of nature, contra the ideas of, of people like Thomas Hobbes uh, or English capitalists, they wouldn't all compete and fight with one another, they would cooperate. So if you took the state away, then people would work together and live happily together and work out how to go on um, without any coercion or all the problems that Kropotkin and his friends thought came with the state. So in fact, his picture of nature is a quite anarchist view of, of, of how nature works. Um, and, and what he'd effectively done was to take the Russian context that he was in and incorporate it into his picture of nature. So this story is interesting because what it seems to show is that um, a scientific theory uh, can take its local context and the, the political values that belong to it 
and incorporate those into stories about the natural world. And in this case, you had two different theories, uh, and the Russians criticised the English for putting their society into nature. And the uh, response was a, a picture of nature in which one sees aspects of Russian society at the time. So it's a fascinating case of how science and politics are connected, but it's of course only one theory. And the big question is, and this is something to think about for the future, the big question is, is does that happen all the time or is this a special case? Is science always incorporating its local context or does it manage to get beyond it? Um, so how do we have a can we have a truly objective science um, or must it always be a reflection of the time and place in which it's produced?